Okay, so this is our amazing toying. I'm online with one of our members. Uh, her name is uh, Nelly. And um, Nelly joined a, a few months ago. And, you know, when she first joined, you know, I interviewed her. And she told me I experienced as a, an investor. And she's also a real estate agent. But one of the things I found out was that um, even though she's been investing for a while, you know, she hasn't made any money in all these properties. So, you know, we did some, um, a little amount of training. I gave her, you know, uh, my wife's, uh, I mean, you know, whatever advice I could and showed her how to get rid of these houses or get rid of the headache so that she can either get started and learn some more and make some money um, instead of just owning real estate because a lot of people want to own real estate but if you can make money there's no point in owning real estate so i'm going to um, have nelly come online and say hi hi nelly hi Karen. <laughs> how are you good how are you how's it been going um well um better now that i was able to sell the property um as i shared with you um i tried to I had an investment property with a tenant. Um, I was, she was uh, sick and wasn't paying the rent. I tried to uh, work with her because I felt that um, she needed assistance, but really I felt taken advantage of, and um, I fell behind on on bills uh, because I had to make repairs. I had to make the the mortgage payment, and so I wanted to. To get out of that situation, but I emotionally um, got caught up, and and so I needed to to refocus and look at my options. So when we met together, and you told me that I should offer my property for less um, instead of marketing it and selling it for full price value to a regular buyer, that I could sell it to another investor at a cheaper price and get it sold quicker, and that's what I was able to do. I I dropped the price so it would be attractive to an investor, but I could still make a little bit of money, and um, in doing that, I was able to save the house from going into foreclosure, and I was able to walk away from what became my headache and what was really making me feel like a failure. So now that I was able to sell it and make a little bit of money, I no longer have the stress of that property and therefore feel like I can now move forward and be productive again in real estate. All right, cool. So now let me ask you this. When you got into real estate, uh, you know, how long ago? Um, I bought my first property when I was 20 years old, so that was uh, quite some time ago. Okay. <laughs> And this pro this Bastu property, if I recall, you bought it in two thousand and two, correct? Yeah. Okay, so from two thousand and two to two thousand and fourteen, when I met you, that's about twelve years, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. And in those twelve years, did you make any money on the property? Um, well, it was always rented, so I did always have a cash a positive cash flow. So okay. I did make uh, I did make uh, a good income from it. Okay. But at at some point, then it became a headache. Yes. When the tenant got sick, I didn't evict her. I was trying to be a good Samaritan and help her out. But she didn't pay the rent for like eight months. And so it really... And then she needed uh, repairs. Okay. And so it really uh, became a, a bad situation. When you got into real estate, what was your intention? Was your intention to make money or just to in, in, uh, buy properties? Uh, well, I, I grew up with um, my father who was an investor and his um, business plan was to buy and hold. And so okay. that was my intention. But I would really prefer not to do that right now because um, right now I'm needing money um, to help my kids with their education because um, they're at the university level. So I really need to buy something and then flip it. Um, so then I can get quick cash, not the positive cash flow. So eventually I do want to buy more properties and have um, steady income from it, 
but not right now. In the next five years, I just need to buy and flip and then eventually start buying more properties to where I could have that positive cash flow. Okay. So you are also an agent, right? A real estate agent, yes. Yeah. And so you've been an agent for how long? Um, I've been a real estate agent since 2005. Okay. So being an agent really doesn't really um, give you the training to uh, become an investor and make money buying and selling, correct? Correct. It does not. It does not. Um, being a real estate agent does not benefit you in the long term as far as making money on the same level as an investor. You kind of, um, you, have, uh, you have to wait on the sale and you have to wait. The cash flow isn't there. The money you make, um, all those to bills, and so it's, it's not very steady, but it does not educate you or give you any experience as far as being an investor. Okay. So, so will you say that the few uh, sessions that we had together, uh, can you tell you know, the other members what you learned you know, in terms of being able to sell your property quickly and, and get rid of the headache? Um, I'm sorry, say that again? I say for the few sessions that we have together that, that I um, showed you what to do, can you tell the, the members you know, what you learned in the short training that we, we had together? Okay, so when we met, I was, um, I was distraught. I thought I was going to lose the house in foreclosure, and I had equity in the property, so I was really frustrated. Um, the tenant wouldn't allow me to show the property. She changed the locks. She let the pool turn green. And when we met, you advised me that I could drop the price. So um, I did drop the price. And then when I did that, the um, when I sold the property, when I marketed it, I advised the investor that the tenant wanted to stay in the house. So I found an investor who liked the price, who was willing to keep the tenant. They liked the positive cash flow that was there and that the tenant um, had been there a long time. So I was able to get an offer within, um, from the time I marketed it, I got an offer within the same week and then I closed it um, 45 days later because the investor was... Um, getting his cash from another sale. So um, I was able to sell the, the property quickly. I didn't have to. You told me to drop the price, and then you also advised me to seek an investor who wanted to keep the tenant because she was being difficult because she wanted to stay. And so in doing those two things, I was able to get rid of the property quickly. The tenant stayed in the property, which, which she's happy about. And the investor was happy because um, there's, he didn't have to do any repairs. He didn't have to um, clean it out. There's a contract already in place. It, um, the tenant is Section 8, so with the county. So he will get direct deposit for 80% of the rent. So it was a win-win situation. So after I met with you and you, um, you helped me discover the options that were available, instead of walking away and losing money and then having the tenant get evicted out of the property because of a foreclosure, I was able to let her stay in the house. I got uh, a little bit of money and then the investor was able to continue in in his um, investment activity, so he was happy. So everybody was happy, and that I was able to learn from you after sitting with you, I think, twice. <laughs> so in only two, two uh, sessions, you know, you were able to learn all this. And were you able to also learn how you could advertise the property so you could get rid of it quicker? Yes. Um, I, I was able to advertise, and um, there's several free sites where investors go to look. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have to say, though, this is where um, I listed it on the MLS, and that's where I got this investor. Eventually, but okay. It, yeah, so being a real estate agent did help me in that. Um, but in the past, I, I, I've i been able to, I know you suggested also that I put it on um, other, like Craigslist and other places like that, which I did. 
But ultimately, it was another agent who found this investor who okay. made the offer. Okay, so, so one of the things I want you to learn is that most investors, I mean, I've been an investor, well, for almost 20 years, right? And right. even though um, I buy properties, when I go to sell, I still use agents. Now, I have an advantage because I'm also a broker, right? Okay. Right. And so I'm not surprised that an agent brought you the buyer, okay? And, and, and one of the things you have to learn as an investor is that you always price the cost of selling into the, your deal. You understand? Because if you didn't price the cost of selling, you end up losing money, okay? And what most people do is that they, they think they're going to sell the property themselves and it doesn't sell quick enough and, and so they keep losing money as they leave the property in the market, right? Um, right. You know, especially if you pull uh, investment money to buy the property. Every month, the mm -hmm. property stays in the market, it costs you money. Right. Okay. So. Um, also, you had some other properties. You had another one in uh, Ohio, right? Um, you know, that you didn't know what to do with for a long time. Right, and I um, ultimately, well, initially what happened is it was out of state, and I never did go see it. I did start um, work, repair work on it, um, but the person, the contractor that I hired to do the work, he immediately started to rack up bills, a lot of bills, saying, oh, well, th I didn't know this was broken or that was broken. And because I was far away, I didn't know. I asked him to videotape it, and he wouldn't. And so I found it to be the, very, very difficult. Um, so he stopped work. That was within the first month, the first few months of me owning the property. Well... Eventually, I stopped putting money into it. I never went to visit it, and I started getting letters from code enforcement. So they started to attach liens to the property, which I ignored, and they um, demolished after a few years of not getting any payment on liens and me not um, correcting any of the um, citations that I was giving on the house and on the yard. They demolished the property, and so now it's vacant land. And now I can't sell the vacant land for the liens that I owe, so I lost money in that. So it made it difficult uh, because it was so far away. Um, and so I had never bought a property out of state. I bought it on, at an auction. It was a really good price, but because I didn't do anything with it, then I lost all the money. <laughs> So if you knew, I mean, if you had met me when you bought the property, you would have had some exit strategy, right, based on what you learned? Yes. I would have had a, a lot more knowledge on how to go about working with it. A lot of a lot of the information that I get from you, it's not really complicated, but um, in my mind it seemed complicated, but just being able to know that you can advise me on how to handle these things, because I know you have a lot of out-of-state properties, too, that... Um, but it would have helped me a lot because you told me I could have marketed to local investors, which I never really considered, but I could have made a little bit of money, uh, but instead I ignored it because I didn't know what to do. So now I ended up losing all of my investment. So now will you say to uh, that it's actually always good for somebody to have uh, 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 a knowledgeable I, person holding their hands when they go to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how advantageous is it for uh, a will-be investor to get training as opposed to going out there and trying to figure it out themselves? Well, the difference would be um, instead of making mistakes and having to suffer the consequences, if you have an advisor or an experienced investor who can guide you, you can go to them and before you get into an investment, you can see if it's a problem. If you have an advisor who can review um, the investment with you, and so then you can see if, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are, instead of blindly going into a situation and hoping that you're making the right decision and then finding out later that you didn't deal with it correctly or it wasn't what you thought it was. So instead of making the 
because you learn, it takes so much longer when you learn that way. It's so much easier when you can, like we sat together twice and I was able to um, profit off of this property in Barstow. It would have been advantageous to me to have spoken to you sooner or had I known you sooner, so I wouldn't have gone through this situation. I would have quickly dealt with it um, and evicted the tenant and then I could have re-rented it and maybe it wouldn't have been uh, such a bad situation, but definitely having someone to guide you and knowing that they're educated and experienced in investing would allow me to be a lot more profitable and have less bad experiences. All right, cool. So I wanted to act just, you know, conduct this uh, small interview just to show uh, other members that um, when you have an opportunity to get a training, it, it cuts your learning curve uh, by a whole amount and you yeah. don't you end up not losing money you know because right. sometimes feel, sometimes people think well uh, I don't want to pay for training but then you know if you don't pay for training what does what happens it end up costing you more than you could have paid for training <laughs> right? yeah there's a lot of pain and suffering and, and a lot of money lost <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so it's like uh, it's a question of pay now or pay later, you know. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm glad you are able to get out of your bus tour because I was really concerned for you, you know, when we first met. Uh, uh -huh. Because even when I when we first talked, you know, you were like, well, I don't want to get rid of it. And I'm like, I kept asking you, well, why not? You're not making money, so, <laughs> right, you remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so I want to thank you for the interview. You know, it's a, uh, a good experience, and I'm sure you've learned quite a bit. And there's always, you know, opportunity to learn more. Okay. Right. So, um, so I'll stay in touch with you, and um, you still get our emails, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, Nelly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good right. talking to you. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. bye. Okay, so um, that, that was Nelly, and, and one of the things I want to say is that um, when people go into real estate, okay, some of them go in with the intention of just buying a house to live in, others go in with the intention of um, buying a house for investment, okay. Um, there's the difference between buying a house for investment and making money or just buying a house for investment, okay. Very few people know how to buy a house and make money. And so my goal is to teach you how to make money buying houses. Okay. I always tell people, I get paid to buy houses. If I don't get paid, I won't buy a house. It's as simple as that. Okay. And how do I get paid? I get paid in form of equity. And equity, you could turn into cash any day of the week. Okay. So when you go out there and you see all this investment, you know, gurus that are telling you they can do this or they can do that first of all you got to ask them well show me what you've done okay i've done 400 properties and i bought each property one at a time i didn't buy bulk okay so i had to negotiate with you I, first i got to find the property negotiate with the seller solve their problem you know whether it's tax lien uh, foreclosure irs lien foundation problems, roof problems, you know, inheritance problem, probate problems, you know, you name it, I've encountered it in the market. And if you're an investor, you're, you're going to encounter those kind of situations on a regular basis. So, um, you know, if you don't have somebody holding your hand, you are going to run into a problem because I ran into the same problem. When I first started, I bought uh, um, Carlton Sheets, you know the the overnight uh, um, late night guru I bought this program okay the package arrived I read it I took the contract out I started making calls I found a property I talked to the owner I fill out the contract then he asked me a question online one of the lines you know you had like lines one through five he asked me a question and I couldn't answer the question I was so embarrassed you know so I was like obviously I didn't buy the property because I couldn't answer his question so and i couldn't call calton sheets because there were it, it, he wasn't available to answer my questions so i put the package under my bed for five years 
Five years later, I bought it again, and I tried it again, and I still failed. And the difference I found out after 20 years of investing is that the people that fail in this business, most of the time do not know what they're doing, and so they get discouraged. The, the other thing is that if you don't have somebody holding your hand, okay, that tells you, okay, this is the way, okay, there's a, there's a ditch there, don't fall into the ditch, or this direction is not going to work, or you have a question, you don't know who to ask, okay, because most of the people that you're dealing with cannot answer your question, you know, for example, if you have a, uh, a problem uh, with title, you know, sometimes the title officer will tell you, you go figure it out yourself. They, they don't solve problems. The real estate agent doesn't solve problems, okay. Um, the insurance guy doesn't solve your problem, or the construction guy is not going to solve your problem. You have to know how to solve the problem. And if you don't have somebody on in your corner that can show you based on the experience, because I've encountered every uh, problem you could think of in real estate after 20 years. I mean, you tell me the problem, I would solve it for you, including filing a lawsuit just to quiet title. Most people didn't know, don't know what a quiet title is. You know, most of the time when you buy a tax deed property, you have to quiet title on it. In other words, you have to prove to the, to the title company that there's nobody else out there that will come in and affect the title. If not, they will insure it for you. So if you go to an attorney to help you quiet title, they will charge you anywhere from five to twenty thousand dollars, depending on who objects. Okay, I had to do it myself. Okay, I went to court, did it myself. It took me almost a year to quiet the title, which is normally what it would take, um, because it's a lawsuit involved. I learned all those processes by doing it. Okay, um, you know, over a period of time. So over the last twenty years, I've encountered what whatever problem there is there as far as real estate and so that's the opportunity that i'm offering to you the knowledge that i'm trying to transfer to you so that you're not out there on your own trying to go uh blindfolded hoping that something will give and sometimes maybe you'll make some money this is not a maybe business you're going in with your eyes wide open but you also have a, a guide okay somebody who is going to support you hold your hands and tell you and point you in the direct direction so you could make money this business is not about just investing it's about making money okay time is money and when you spend your time looking for property you're making sure you're looking for properties that can actually pay you not just properties that everybody wants to sell we're not interested in buying properties that everybody wants to sell we're interested in finding properties that has problems so we could solve their problems Okay, if you know how to solve problems, you could make money in this business. Okay, you could solve one problem and make forty thousand dollars. Okay, whereas people who have no clue will pass that same problem. They will look at it and say, "Oh, wait a minute, I don't want to deal with this. It's too complicated." But if you know the solution, you just walk right in. Okay, I know because I've, I've, I've had deals where other investors pass by and I pick up the deal and and I made forty fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So that, you know, that's what I want to, you know, um, discuss today. This is amazing toying. I hope you guys uh, understand where I'm coming from. And if you have questions, you can always go on our website, www.gicdealfinders.info. If you're not a member, you want to join so you could get um, started right away. Thank you.